Vulnerability is hard and it's scary and it feels dangerous, but it's not as hard, scary, or dangerous as getting to the end of our lives and having to ask ourselves, what if I would have shown up? Thanks for clicking on this video. I was doing the dishes tonight, listening to some YouTube videos, and a lot of them were content from Brene Brown. I wanted to share that I was inspired by her so that you can go watch some of her videos. And this is the passage that changed, changes my life. It's not the critic who counts. It's not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done it better. The credit belongs to the person who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred with blood and sweat and dust, who at the best, in the end, knows the triumph of high achievement, and who at worst, if he fails, he fails daring greatly. So the moment that I read that, I closed my laptop, and this is what shifted in me. Three huge things. First, it is not about winning, it's not about losing, it's about showing up and being seen. The second thing, this is who I want to be. I want to create. I want to make things that didn't exist before I touched them. I want to show up and be seen in my work and in my life. And if you're going to show up and be seen, there is only one guarantee, and that is you will get your ass kicked. So you have to decide at that moment, I think for all of us, if courage is a value that we hold, this is a consequence. You can't avoid it. The third thing, which really set me free, and I think Steve, my husband, would argue has made me somewhat dangerous, is kind of a new philosophy about criticism, which is this. If you're not in the arena also getting your ass kicked, I'm not interested in your feedback. I wanna start contributing more than I criticize. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at, at um, being non-critical, um, but I, I wanna be able to contribute more. I think there's a lot of value in, in YouTube and in videos that have um, that are a composite or a condensed um, five to 10 or 15 minute video. I want this to be a compilation of a lot of great principles that we can use to, to try to apply to our lives. And if nothing else, it's, it's a way for me, me to be able to learn as I go through this process. So I did my first therapy session today. You know, with the circumstances of my life right now, I figured why not get some help? Why not talk through some of these emotions and feelings and to have somebody that's a listening ear, somebody who's non-judgmental, somebody who's wanting to show love and also contribute, um, somebody that's in my corner that could help give me guidance and coaching and, um, and just go through that therapy process to be able to um, achieve more healing and more peace and be able to move forward. Just kind of an example, I, I spent $100 $57 to get our brakes fixed. Um, it, it's worth it for me to have spent about $240 to have a month's worth of therapy and access to a therapist and a lot of groupinars and webinars and different things as well. Um, so invest in yourself. Shame is an epidemic in our culture. And to get out from underneath it, to find our way back to each other, we have to understand how it affects us and how it affects the way we're parenting, the way we're working, the way we're looking at each other. If we're gonna find our way back to each other, we have to understand and know empathy because empathy is the antidote to shame. If you put shame in a Petri dish, it needs three things to grow exponentially, secrecy, silence, and judgment. If you put the same amount of shame in a Petri dish and douse it with empathy, it can't survive. The two most powerful words when we're in struggle, me too. And so I'll leave you with this thought. If we're going to find our way back to each other, vulnerability is going to be that path. And even if you got as perfect as you could and as bulletproof as you could possibly muster. Oh, well, pardon me, Mr. Perfect. I guess I forgot that you never ever make a mistake. When you got in there, that's not what we want to see. We want you to go in 
We want to be with you and across from you. And we just want for ourselves and for the people we care about and the people we work with to dare greatly. And the problem is when you armor up against vulnerability, you shut yourself off because vulnerability is certainly a part of fear and self-doubt and grief and uncertainty and shame, but it's also the birthplace of these. It's the birthplace of love, of belonging, of joy, trust, empathy, creativity, and innovation. Without vulnerability, you cannot create. We try to combat not being enough by pleasing and performing and perfecting. We go through our lives trying to be who we think we're supposed to be, doing and saying what we think people want to hear, putting on whatever mask or face we think we need to put on for that moment. And what that leaves us is exhausted. When we're pleasing and perfecting and performing, we end up saying, Yes, a lot when we mean no. Basically, we don't want to be a jerk and we don't want to miss out on stuff. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And we also end up saying no when we mean, oh, heck yes, I want to do that. I, I really want to do that. And you know what? Even though I have a lot of work, I want to do it now. I don't want to do it five pounds from now. <laughs> I don't want to do it when I'm great. I don't want to do it when I've practiced. I just want to do it now. But we don't have those boundaries when we don't feel like we're worthy and enough. Choose discomfort over resentment. So how do we do things without resentment? You know, and it takes boundaries. So in the end, I think if we take away anything from the authenticity piece, it is about the courage to be imperfect, to be vulnerable, and to set boundaries. Because the whole idea of I am enough starts with enough. And so we decided to make a list of everything that was happening in our lives when we felt really joyful. Like what, what's happening, not a want list, but like actually based on evidence, like we're the happiest when what's happening. And we looked at this list and the list was the opposite of the want list. The want list dictated to us that we needed to work more and make more money. And the joy list meant less work and more time. Here's the part where we all struggle. Worthiness does not have prerequisites. Can I get an amen? We need to find a way to engage with the world from a place of worthiness. We need to find a way to say, I'm enough. This is who I am. Because I literally believe that our lives depend on it. We're lucky that there's a lot of monarch butterflies. But before they become a butterfly, they go through this larva stage where they're a, a caterpillar. And it's been really cool for us to be able to see the development of these caterpillars as they become a butterfly. I remember learning about this in grade school, about the whole metamorphosis. And what I love about Brene Brown is she helps us see how sometimes we can get stuck in this caterpillar phase. We might go our whole life as a caterpillar if we're not, if we don't have the tools or if we're not willing or vulnerable enough to be able to break through conditioning of shame and guilt and fear and be able to go through this process. I think the, the time period is you'll spend about two weeks in this larva stage and you, you double and triple in size as you're consuming and as you're growing. Um, and then there's this time period where you are um, developing passively, but surely developing. And, and then you become this beautiful butterfly. What I love about Brene Brown is she demonstrates how we can move on from being a caterpillar to becoming a butterfly and to achieve our, our full potential. If only we will dare greatly if we'll step into the unknown, if we'll be more vulnerable, and if we're, we'll be willing to share, if we'll be willing to be authentic and be able to tell our story. It's so scary to show up. It feels dangerous to be seen. It's terrifying. But it is not as scary, dangerous, or terrifying as getting to the end of our lives and thinking, what if I would have shown up? What would have been different?
Put yourself out there and walk out there so people can see you and see what you've made and see what you're doing.